Hey guys, we're back with another video. This time I'm taking a look at uh, Crystal Maiden. She's my newest custom figure, and she's from the popular online game Dota 2. This was a commission figure, and I was uh, asked to do this. And luckily, um, I'm a fan of the game, so that always helps when you know the source material. And uh, even though I haven't played and I kind of suck at it, um, it was still fun to do one of the characters that I did use and somebody whose um, aesthetic design was pleasing to me and uh, I was a fan of. Alright, so Crystal Maiden has kind of like a Ice Queen thing going on. She's got a lot of fur and uh, her robes and this kind of light blue and these designs all over. So her, um, like, from her knees down, she's got kind of these fur wraps uh, and boots, sort of. So those are really fun to sculpt and just trying to get all that going. Uh, I was using the in-game model as a reference and um, sort of like the polygon count. I had to uh, kind of make up some stuff as I went along, but I think the fur in particular turned out pretty well. Especially the fur trim around her shoulder pads and down her cape. So for her torso, I kind of went with a layered uh, layered look to match um, her character design, and I knew I wanted to incorporate some fabric. So there's some around her waist, uh, midsection, she has that tabard that hangs down, and also those purple stockings, those are fabric too. And then here and there around all that will be some sculpted areas just to match. And her shoulder pads. Uh, I used styrene, which is like a plastic card material. Um, I bent that into that specific shape because it's kind of a, an awkward shape. And then just sculpted so they could flare um, at the top and bottom. And then I sculpted the fur trim around that. So those are mostly sculpted and then glued into place um, around the back. And there's strips of fabric that go into like that brass ring which is also sculpted, and in the front, uh, they're connected by like a gold chain. So those are kind of a feat of engineering in and of themselves. And her staff was a styrene rod, and then all of the detail you can see on there, basically everything that's not black, was sculpted like over styrene, or just sculpted uh, in and of itself. And then one of the last pieces, and uh, this was a special request of the client, was that her hood um, I could that I make her hood like removable at this scale I couldn't make it like fold up and down like a real hood so I made it a separate piece um, sculpted the head fully fully sculpted the hair all the way around uh, the head pops off and then just just painted everything and then I I made um, the hood out of fabric and while it was wet I kind of like molded it into shape and glued it and creased it where it needed to go so I get that natural flowing shape of it going down uh, the sides and to her shoulders, so that turned out really well and totally matched um, the reference material, so I was really happy with that. Alright, so underneath all of this is um, a Hasbro Marvel Legends, I think, female shield agent, and her top half was, I think it was Mystique or Black Widow or one of those, one of those newer ones that has like the cleavage exposed. So what I did for that was I dremeled down the collar, the big like uh, catsuit collar that goes all around her neck, and then I re-sculpted the neck and sort of the upper chest just to keep that because she has kind of the same um, low V-cut robe going on. So the articulation is basic for all those female bodies, um, and it is restricted by her costume, but. So arms go up and out and rotate. Um, I kept the upper torso swivel because I thought that was pretty cool. I could hide it um, in the fabric right there. So there's that. And then she still moves at the thighs, those horrible thighs that are like 45 degrees up in there. But she can get some nice wide poses. And her knees still bend through the fabric stocking, so that's pretty cool. Alright, so let's take a look at some of um, the detail work here. 
And that hood, as you saw, just comes right off and then can pop right back on. Slide it down in there. So there she is. And these shoulder pads uh, are loose. That way they can move uh, with the arms, so the arms can go out a little bit for some dynamic poses with the staff. And then they connect just like they do on the character model back here. There's some uh, strips of fabric that wrap around. And there's this ring right here that's glued into place, and then these strips hang freely. So, like some of the fur detail, um, this is all sculpted with this, uh, these like ties right here. And then what I did on the parts that needed to move, like on her tabard that hangs down right here, I took some soft, uh, like soft plastic um, from like different figures, like if they have a cape or a coat or something and it's really soft, almost rubber-like. And I would use a Dremel tool and sand it down and then sand in there like the fur pattern. And then when I did that I would cut it out in the shape of the trim I needed and then paint it. So I did that here. And all like I used a uh, figure cape and then I would cut this rectangular, uh, rectangular shape and then just Dremel that so it looked like fur and then painted. And then the, the other fur up here is just sculpted on these shoulder pads. And everything else was just uh, hand painted detail. She has a lot of like scroll work going on uh, on her outfit here. So you can see some of that and then it continues on the shoulder pads. And then like these gems right here were sculpted in place and glued. And then I put uh, like a gloss finish on those just so they shine when the light catches them. Okay, so for her head, I used a head cast I made. And it was from, let me see, um, like that sort of short-lived comic X-Men series. Uh, and it was at Extreme Rogue. And that's one of the more attractive female faces I, I think that they've ever done. And then I sculpted the hair all around that. I kind of kept it close to the head just so the hood would sit naturally. And then the rest is just painted detail on there. Okay, and I also made uh, her staff, which is pretty important. Um, so the top was that, that shape, this shape right here was just cut out of plastic styrene and then I glued it into this um, this rod, this plastic rod and then I sculpted like all the crystal work you see right here in this design uh, and then that was just all painted and I put a gloss finish on there just to make it look more um, like ice crystals and there's some bottom detail All right guys, there she is, Crystal Maiden from Dota 2. Um, she really turned out great. This was an awesome figure to do. And it was great that I could uh, identify with a figure uh, or a character and I uh, was familiar with, and that's not always the case with um, commission works. But um, when I did play this game, she was one of the few characters that I actually could use and wouldn't just disappoint everybody. Uh, on my team. So it was really cool to bring a character, and this is uh, as always the case when you bring a character that may only exist like digitally um, or 2D and sort of bring them to life uh, in the three-dimensional realm. So it was really a lot of fun. Uh, and another thing really quick, I also uh, made sure to give her her ulti. And she also has Shadow Blade.